Hello, it's uh, John back with another Lick of the Week video series. Um, a few years back, maybe five or six years or more ago, uh, I posted a set of videos about chord groupings, which was kind of my take on uh, the cage system from guitar applied to the banjo as far as chord shapes go. So if you're not familiar with the whole chord grouping thing that uh, I talked about, you might want to go back and check out those videos by that title. And basically it was a way to show you how to find all the chords you'll need in, in uh, a close proximity to each other using the standard shapes. And I won't go over those again here because I'll just assume you already know how to do that. And if you don't, you can go back and look. Uh, I've got you know, probably three or four videos about that. In this next set of videos, what I'm going to do is expand on the chord groupings. I'm going to make the chord groupings more inclusive. Uh, to give you more choices for chords because you know unless you're just going to play traditional say bluegrass or folk music on the banjo you'll need some more chord choices besides just the ones that the major scale supplies you and again theoretically your chords for a key like the key of G typically come from the majority of them come from the scale so you take the G scale you harmonize the notes you go one three five you combine those notes as intervals and you create chords with them and you come up with some chords being major some being minor. Now, it doesn't always work out that chords line up as exactly as, as theory says they should because theory comes after the music. Theory just tries to explain what we already play so it, theory is not a law or a rule or anything it's just kind of a, a way to give terms and uh, explanations to the sounds that we hear. So theoretically speaking, we know that G is our one, A minor is typically our two, and I'm going to make some of these chords shorter uh, without the bass string to make them easier to play. Uh, the B, and I could give you a close-up, I think that would probably be helpful. The three chord would be typically be B minor, and again these are based on G scale notes. G is a major, your two chords typically minor, A minor, and you can make a short version of that if you like. B is your third scale note. If you harmonize that, you get B minor. C would be your four. D would be your five major. E minor, and I'll make a short version of it, built into your one. That's the sixth note of the scale, E, harmonized, makes a minor. And then we uh, made a kind of a blues choice, uh, kind of a, a Mixolydian mode choice. We changed the note from F sharp to F in the scale to make it dominant because that's a more uh, common choice for you know folk and pop and stuff but instead of like you know F sharp diminished or something but again the seven chord the way we're using it in, say in a traditional music contest you know, context like blues and rock and folk and you know bluegrass all the time whatever you want however you want to classify it, the F would be a more common choice so what we wound up with was one, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven, dominant seven, which is kind of bluesy, mix the lead in, whatever you want to call it, and then back to one. So what I want to do in this video is add some choices. Okay, one choice that you will hear in more progressive bluegrass, which you didn't hear in the really early traditional days of bluegrass, was the inclusion of this chord. Like in the key of G, it would be a B flat. I call this the flat three or the blues three. So I'm going to refer to this as the blues three chord. So instead of playing a B minor, which would be your typical, the, the chord you would expect to be the three chord in your progression for the key of G, you might hear a B flat major. And we know there's no B flat note in the key of G, so this whole entire chord is not native to the key of G, but you will hear it written in. And I don't want to get too deep into theory of why that works as blues, other than to say that the B flat note, the root note in this chord, an easy way to think of it is this root note, B flat, is a blues note for the key of G. So if you're playing traditional stuff in the key of G and you start playing a G blues scale, which I've done a video on in the Lick of the Week, you can look up blues, uh, minor pentatonic scales. If you're playing bluesy things on the banjo in any context in G, a B flat note is going to be a very common blues choice note. 
So if you relate that to a B flat major chord, then you'll also hear that songs that have that in it sound bluesy. And if you listen to like classic rock from the 60s and early 70s, you'll hear a lot of that blues in general, you know, pop music. So how do we find this blues three chord? Well, it's pretty easy in the confines of this uh, box that we've built, this chord grouping around this area of the fingerboard. Anytime you're playing the one chord in the F shape, in this group of chords where the F shape is the go-to chord, that's your one, the location of your index finger in this shape tells you the location of the bar. So wherever this index finger is, like the second string, third fret, that's where you will build your blues three chord. Now, uh, I like to use song examples. Uh, uh, I was trying to think of one that leapt to mind while I was doing this video, is the Boone Creek song. Boone Creek was a great band with Ricky Skaggs and Jerry Douglas and Terry Balcom uh, back from the 70s. They had a song called, uh, oh, well now the title escapes me, <laughs> uh, it was actually a song that included this, One Way Track was the name of the song, now it just popped in my head. And I'll just sing a little bit of the song and play the progression. This is the chorus of the song. This is where the blues three or the B flat major chord will come into play, if you play it in the key of G. My heart's breaking, loneliness taking me on a one-way trip on down the track. My soul is burning, wheels are turning. Hey, Mr. Engineer, won't you bring my baby back? Now, don't listen to my terrible singing, obviously, but you'll notice right away that in the course of that tune, you know, there's a B flat, which again does not belong in the key of G, but it is a common change in some of these more modern bluegrass songs. And if you definitely play rock, blues, pop, that's a chord change that's going to be. Uh, more atypical than you know just G C and D or G and E minor and C that you hear in say a bluegrass context. So it's a, a broader chord palette for you to work from. So even if you never play any bluegrass songs that have that particular chord in the progression, you will need this chord to play other kinds of things like if you adapt rock tunes to the banjo or blues tunes or pop tunes or whatever, any kind of tune. If you write a tune and you like the sound of that, you'll need to know where that's located. And again, the beauty of chord shapes on your banjo in a, in a key tuning like the key of G, like we're tuned to now, is every chord shape, as long as all strings are covered, they're movable. So we know that if we wanted to transpose that song, one-way track, to the key of A, My heart's breaking, loneliness taking me on a one-way trip on down the track so you see I'm doing the same finger movements because again that's the beauty of the chord groupings idea is once you locate the chord and you know that that blues chord is this location even if you don't know the name of the chord right away like for the key of A your blues 3 would be a C major chord and again C major is not native to the key of A so if you were to write out an A scale do your chord groupings for the key of A, you'll notice that there's no C major in there. So you're borrowing C major and overlaying it into the, inserting it into the key of A. So the C functions as like a bluesy chord choice. My heart's breaking, loneliness taking me on a one way trip on down the track. My soul is burning, wheels are turning. Hey, Mr. Engineer, won't you bring my baby back? And you can continue to do this anywhere I locate a key center, say the key of C. So if I want to do this on there, and it's going to be way too high for me to sing, but it's going to be the same. My heart's breaking, loneliness taking me on a one way trip. I'm singing a low octave on down the track. My soul is burning. Wheels are turning, hey Mr. Engineer, won't you bring my baby back? So no matter what key I put this in, major key, if I use the F shape group of chords as my go-to set of shapes, I'll know that I have this blues chord located conveniently nearby. So that will wrap up this video. Add that blues three, 
whatever you want to call that additional chord. You can call it just a blues choice, whatever. It goes along with kind of like F, which is not native to the key, but it adds another dimension to what you're able to play on the banjo by hearing that chord and being able to find it. And if you listen to songs, you'll be able to identify when you hear that particular change because it has a certain cadence, it has a feel to it, so that when you hear a chord change from the root key, the root chord of the key that you're in, to that three that's bluesy, you'll automatically detect anytime you hear that blues three kind of sound, you'll recognize it and you'll be able to find it on your banjo. And we're going to expand this into some other chord changes that are pretty common and talk theoretically about, you know, why those changes happen. But more importantly, we're going to expand and add more choices to our chord grouping. So the next video will have some more information about that, so be on the lookout for it. Appreciate you watching. See you in the next video.